Hi guys, I know it's been a long time since I made my last episode but you may remember it was about uh, the phenomena when you look at uh, SQL Server transactions. Today I actually want to follow up finally on this topic and want to talk to you about um, the different transaction levels in SQL Server. <music> So you basically have two different types of transaction level. You have uh, the pessimistic ones and the optimistic one. Pessimistic means that um, we think we might block or lock each other with read and write operations. And an optimistic one is that we think we, in the most cases, don't really block writes uh, with reads or the other way around. So we have also a transaction level that fit into both categories. So I will just list them up now and then we have a, a small look into each of, of one of them. Basically, transaction level just express what kind of phenomena do you want to what costs. So let's start with read uncommitted, the, mo the, the one that has the less restrictions. So it is a, pe a pessimistic type of thing. In read uncommitted transaction level, you basically allow every phenomena. That means we don't have any logs that do anything um, bad here. So readers can't block writers, writers can't block readers. And in this situation, the big pro is of course, you don't have logs and therefore you don't have blocks at all. And you kind of give up consistency for speed, but that's exactly the bad thing, you give up consistency. And Dependless, uh, depending on your um, application, it might not be the best to give up consistency in a database. As an example, I can show you this B tree here. Imagine we have three uh, leaf pages right now. We have page one, two, and three. And those are the allocation orders. So we allocated first this page, then that, then that. And as you know, they are connected with next and previous pointers. So this is also the logical order of it since we know the next one of one is two, next one of two is three and so on and so forth. But now imagine we insert a, a row somewhere in between. Uh, for instance, we have a new data set and it needs to get a new page uh, around here. Then we would add in page, the fourth page, allocation wise, and it would be inserted in the, in the chain right there. So now the problem is SQL Server can read, uh, can table scan in two different ways. The first way is allocation order, that would be mean one, two, three, four. And the second um, possibility would be logical order, which would basically start with the top left no a leaf node and then just go, uh, follow all the next pointers. It would be one, four, two, three. So let's assume we do one, four, two, three, and we are finished with reading four and while we are starting re reading two we move another transaction moves a row from three to one then we would never read this row or vice versa we are finished with, with page one and another transaction moves a row from one to three by updating the key of it then we would have the problem that we read this row twice in the end so it's difficult and it can lead to uh, undesired behavior so be careful about this so the next one we want to talk about is actually the most common one. It's the read committed. This is uh, also the standard and default uh, transaction level if you don't set anything else up. So the tricky part is that read committed can be in both uh, categories. Uh, it, it depends on if you mean uh, the pessimistic read committed or the optimistic read committed. Let's just start with the pessimi pessimistic read committed, which is the default actually in your SQL server. And it basically says, Okay, we allow basically everything, but we don't want to read non-committed data. So if we, if we read data, we don't want to read uh, data from another transaction that changed it, but did not commit the whole transaction yet. That means there are two possible ways of implementation. If you have the pessimistic approach, you uh, have implemented it with, with logs. So each uh, uh, row or data you change gets an exclusive log. An exclusive lock is not compatible with any other lock. So if a data page is locked with an exclusive lock from transaction one, it cannot be uh, used by transaction two at all. So this, this ensures that uh, uh, data that is changed cannot be read or changed until the, uh, until the whole transaction is over. And we have a similar lock, the shared locks for reading. So they, those are compatible with another, each another. So uh, transaction one can put a shared lock 
has to put the shared log on a data page when it wants to read rows of it and transaction 2 can also put the shared log on it they don't bother um, and read the data but the shared log is not compatible with the exclusive log because nothing is uh, nothing is compatible with the exclusive log I will come to uh, how logs work I think uh, later uh, in a few videos I guess um, but for now just know that it is uh, ensured with logs so the thing is we give up concurrency for consistency at this point because we have basically to wait if another transaction read uh, many pages we have to uh, wrote on many pages we have to wait until this transaction commits or rollbacks in order to use uh, this data on the other hand if we look at the optimistic version of read committed we have actually a, a row store that means if transaction one writes on a row or changes some rows in a uh, changes some values in a row then sql server copies the old version of that row into this uh, uh, row store and the new version that is currently uh, under editing from transaction one is locked so if a transaction two now wants to read data from that same row it just takes the last version on the from the version store and then we have no uh, blocks in this case so we cannot still we still cannot uh, see the, the updated value since uh, transaction one was not yet uh, ready to commit it but uh, we don't also just wait for the road to, uh, to the transaction to be committed we can just uh, see an, any older version of it so this is basically yeah a blocking free version of the read committed uh, with the downside of course that we have to store every um, old version of that row in order to see it so now it's get now the next uh, transaction i will just get more strict the next one is also a pessimistic one is called repeatable read and repeatable read does the same thing as read committed uh, in the pessimistic one so we have shared logs and exclusive logs um, the, the difference is just that the shared logs in a read committed snapshot can be released as soon as the select statement is over as soon as we retrieve the data for the repeatable read we want to ensure that when we run a select query within a transaction more than once we always want to have the same result and we can just ensure this by uh, last let, let the shared log last until the end of transaction and not just until the end of the select statement an exclusive log however in both of them has to be uh, there for the all of the time of the transaction of course that's not discussable so basically it's just read committed plus the shared log lasts uh, until the end of transaction so we cannot share uh, we cannot change the data just in between so the next one just very briefly is the snapshot isolation level which is an optimistic one so we put it here the snapshot isolation level basically works like the read committed optimistic uh, level it stores rows of old versions of the row so we can access them uh, the, the only difference between those is basically how old can that row be that I want to have stored in my row version store um, but I won't go into details because it's quite a sophisticated um, stuff for a known video so just keep it in mind we have also the snapshot isolation level which is a little bit more strict than read committed um, yeah but I will come to that maybe in another video yeah and last but not least we have the serialization uh, level which is also a pessimistic one um, and as you can th may think of the the name it is the most strict one so you basically serialize your whole uh, application if you if you set your database or your transactions in in, in this level um, it is basically like repeatable read plus something else and I will demonstrate this on a, on a quick example so imagine this query select uh, everything from customers where postal code between 98,000 and 98,100 imagine this query with the read um, repeatable read um, transaction level we would actually be holding a lock a shared lock on that table um, until the end of transaction right so the thing is with the serialization query we have following uh, case um, we start the, this transaction and we read, we select this query, we read zero rows. So the thing is now we don't have any lock on the table since we didn't even read anything, we can't put locks on data we, that is not there, right? So the thing is now if another transaction, so this is T1, another transaction T2 writes into that customer table with a, with a postal code, let's say 98,000 and 50 
And now on T1, the transaction is still not finished, we want to execute this query again. It should again output zero rows. So that means that this uh, transaction 2 should not be able to insert actually this data set. So how can we do this? Since there was no, no row here, we cannot really lock something that is not there. So we cannot lock data pages that will be created in the future, right? So what a SQL Server does there is to um, add a key range lock. So the key range lock basically tells the table, okay, listen, I lock the key range of 98,000 98, and 98,100, all keys, Inclusive between those numbers are now locked. That means whenever a new transaction wants to insert something within this key range um, It won't work since transaction one locked that whole range of keys in the index of course for it to work it uh, has to, the customer table has to have an index on the postal code uh, column otherwise it won't work and if you ha don't have a postal code, uh, uh, sorry, if you don't have an index on postal code, the whole table will get tab locked. So this is the serialization level, it's strictest of all and has those key range locks that are pretty fancy. Um, yeah, it's just super, it was just an, an overview of transaction levels. If you have any interest to get a deep dive in one of those transaction levels, feel free to uh, leave something in the comments and then I will take care of it. Uh, as for now, I think the next few videos I will plan is to do a video about uh, how logs in general work so we can also evaluate a little bit on transaction levels and logs in, uh, more in depth. So thank you for watching again. I will try really to do my best to make more videos frequently uh, like I did in the old days. So stay tuned and see, uh, see you next time when we talk about logs. Bye!